Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got an abominable book club box to open. So the postman knocked 10 minutes ago with the July Abominable Book Club box, uh, which I will now open for you. So no idea what's in this one. I don't think I've seen any clues as to what is included. Um, but as always, um, I very much enjoy opening these. I enjoy um, doing them on camera as well. I quite enjoy the experience of sharing um, sharing with all of you um, the thrill or the, the gamble of opening the box and seeing uh, if I've got something I've already read or not. So, here we go. Right, so I'm opening the box. Right, okay, let's do the snacks first. So we have got, ooh, this looks quite interesting. Freeze-dried jackfruit. Um, so probably a bit healthier um, than I'd hoped for, but it sounds very nice, doesn't it? So I will, I will see what that's like. Um, I've got my... Um, mystery book so if you haven't watched any of my unboxings before every every month you get a mystery book which is a pre-owned uh, horror or thriller book this feels like a nice slim uh, mass market size paperback so I will open that last as I always do um, but certainly based purely on the size of it that's quite promising and it feels like it could be a a vintagey type um, affair um, you then get um, some drinks as well so let me just open those quickly and see what we've got it's normally a similar sort of uh, you get similar sort of stuff every week so you, or every month so got a couple of uh, herbal tea bags so one that is mint and chocolate which seems a bit weird for herbal tea but we'll see what that's like uh, cranberry and cinnamon so that sounds very nice got a coffee bag which the coffee bags aren't great but they're okay um, in a pinch um, uh, an instant hot chocolate which my son will enjoy um, and a um, Nescafe cappuccino, which, as I've said before, um, in these unboxings, those have become a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. I do quite like those. Right, so let's see what the books are. Um, ooh, okay. I don't have this one, um, but it's by an author I really like, David Sodergren. So I've had a few of his books on Kindle in the past and really enjoyed them. So if you don't know David, he is a Scottish author... Um, who writes books which are, I'm trying to think how to describe them, each of his books feels like it was kind of inspired by um, trashy uh, horror B-movies he saw when he was too young to watch them. Um, he's, a, he's a really avid VHS collector as well. Um, so this is The Har, um, so let me read you the, um, read you the blurb on that. Um, Muriel Macaulay has lived in the Scottish village... Uh, Sorry, I'll start that again. Muriel Macaulay has lived in the Scottish fishing village of Witchhaven all her life. She was born there and she intends to die there. But when an overseas property developer threatens to evict the residents from their homes and raise Witchhaven to the ground in the name of progress, all seems lost until the day a mysterious fog bank creeps inland. Um, the ha. To, uh, to some it brings redemption, to others it brings only madness and death. What macabre secrets lie within the ha? Uh, romantic and deranged, the ha is a gore-soaked folk horror tale from David Sodergren, author of The Forgotten Island and Maggie's Grave. So I haven't read Maggie's Grave. I read The Forgotten Island, which is like a kind of monsters on a, a Thai island book, which was great fun. Um, I've read, uh, what's it called? Bad Girl Blues, I think it was called, which was like a giallo, um, which is really good. And another one, which was a slasher which I now forget the name of, Night Shoot. That was really good as well. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to this. And it has also got a little book plate as well, So, um, which is really cute. So um, David has a pug whose name escapes him. Boris, I think, is the name of the pug, um, who features in um, many of his Instagram posts. So his Instagram name is Paperbacks and Pugs. Um, I believe. So this is a crossover between the Abominable Book Club. So you've got the monster, who, again, I've forgotten the name of the monster, the Abominable Monster, but you've got the Abominable Monster at the back there, um, and then David's pug. Uh, so a nice signed book plate to go in my book. Um, that's, I think, the nicest book plate they've done so far, actually. So I will put that in there so I don't lose it. Um, and then that is the um, envelope <laughs> that the book plate came in. Ah, okay. Um, so now we have um, 
The other book is The Watching by A.M. Shine. So this, the other day, literally in the last week, was recommended to me um, by someone who's in my um, my worky book club, um, Catherine. So she recommended this and said it was excellent. Um, so I was going to get it on Kindle, but I don't have to now because I've got it in paperback and it's got lovely red edges to the pages as well. Um, so this, yeah, Catherine said this was absolutely fantastic. I think it's a debut novel. Um, let me read you the blurb. Um, you can't see them, but they can see you. The forest isn't chanted on any map. Dark on the brightest day, knotted branches hide its ancient secrets from the sun. This is no place to linger, especially after dark. Mina is taking the country road to Connemara, an ever-narrowing maze across frost-pocked frost moor and bog. As the light uh, fades on a leafless December day, her car stutters and the engine dies. Outside, from an unexpected tree line, a scream. No, worse, an otherworldly shriek. Uh, Mina knows better than to get out of her car, but of course she will. So this sounds really fun, doesn't it? Um, so I'm very pleased with the two main books this month, um, both ones that I wanted to read anyway um, and didn't have, so that's fantastic. Um, right, so moving on then, we have got some um, bookmarks as usual. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. They're always like movie themed and I'm ashamed to say I've got no idea what this one is. Um, so if you know, tell me. I feel like I should know. So, sort of blood cells on that side and this sort of monster thing on the other side. Oh, are they supposed to be balloons? Is it? Is it it? I don't know. Tell me. Tell me if I'm being dumb. Um, and then just the standard one as well, which has a piece of flash fiction on the back, which I have to confess I never read. <laughs> I never read the flash fiction. I should do. Some people, when they do these unboxings, actually read the story, but I'm too cheap to do that. Far too busy and important. Um, so yes, anyway, nice bookmarks and a lovely, lovely pin. Um, so every other month, I think it is, you get a badge, a nice enamel pin. This is this is definitely it themed. I do recognise that. That is really nice, isn't it? Um, so the company that makes these, I think, is owned by the same people who do the box. So I think this is pretty much the only way you can get these pins, but they are fantastic. Um, that's very cool. Um, right, that is everything from the box, I think. Yeah, apart from the packing stuff. So let me open my mystery book. So this is always the biggest gamble of all um, because having read Trashy Horror for a very long time, not that I'm saying the two books I've just shown you there are trashy, um, I often have read the um, the books that uh, you get as the mystery book or already own them if I haven't read them. So we will see. As always, it's beautifully packaged with a nice little wax seal there. So let's get into it and see what it is. Maybe a candidate for Garbogus, you never know. It feels like it, you know, it's kind of the dimensions of a guy in Smith book, but we will see if it is. Oh, it's not, but it's uh, it's Grey Masterton. So it's an early Grey Masterton book, which I haven't read, The Wells of Hell, um, which has a fantastically icky cover. Um, so when's this from? This is pretty old, I think. 79. God, it stinks as well. It's got that musty old book smell. So yeah, originally published in 1979. Uh, this edition is from 1988. Oh, so very pleased with that. Um, so let me read you the back of this one as well. Um, Legions from Hell. Uh, New Midford was a peaceful old town where nothing ever happened until overnight the water turned a hideously sinister car... car I'll <laughs> put my teeth in. Until overnight the water turned a hideously sinister colour. Then Alison and Jimmy Bodine disappeared and the body of a young woman was discovered. The gory remains of an inhuman feast. Rumours of the scaly crab creatures on the outskirts of town had already thrown the citizens into a state of total terror, but nothing had prepared them for the unimaginable horror of the evil that had worked its way uh, with young Oliver Bodine's body. Something had changed an innocent child into a loathsome, soulless monster, a nightmare vision from the bowels of hell. For, uh, for beneath this town, a legacy as old as evil as Satan, a legacy of supernatural, uh, of, a, uh, of supernatural force and destruction had returned to claim fresh victims to swell the ranks of a race that springs straight from the wells of hell. That looks phenomenal. <laughs> that sounds really good. It doesn't, uh, despite its age and mustiness, it doesn't feel like it's ever been read. Um, okay, cool. This might be the best, the best box yet, actually. Um, I'm very pleased with uh, with all three of these. So just to recap, uh, so The Heart by David Sodergren, uh, 
The Watchers by A.M. Shine and Wells of Hell by Graham Marston. So a fantastic selection there. Um, okay, time for another random book from the shelf. So I thought I would pluck something that you might find as a mystery book in an abominable book club box. Um, in that there were loads of copies of these floating around at some point in the past, but they are now, um, I think, pretty much out of print. Um, I think you can still get them on Kindle, but I think paper paper copies are no more. Um, so this is Cutthroat by Michael Slade. So Michael Slade is actually a pseudonym. Well, I, th I used to think it was a pseudonym for a team of, of writers. Yeah, so it says here, Michael Slade is a pseudonym of a firm of Canadian criminal lawyers um, specialising in the field of criminal insanity. Um, but there is also someone who claims to be, and I assume is Michael Slade, uh, who has a Twitter account under the name, I think it's Mountie Noir, um, who appears to just be one guy. So I don't know if latterly the um, the books in this series are just written by him um, and they're not written by the team anymore. But anyway, this is a series that started in the 80s. This is the third book in the series. The series is called Special X and it's about a branch of the Canadian Mounted Police um, who investigate serial killers and you know and whatnot so there are always gruesome murders in these books they have quite a strong kind of police procedural element to them um, yeah there's always um, there's always a bit of police procedural stuff going on there's always lots of gory deaths and there's often a bit of something supernatural too um, so they're really very enjoyable books um, I do like them quite a lot and I've read quite a few of the early ones I have read this one um, I read them back in the 80s. I've started rereading them. So I've read the first two, which are Headhunter and Ghoul. Um, I haven't read this one, which is the third one, or reread this one. Yeah, I definitely read it back in the day, but I need to reread it and then continue with the series. So thanks very much for watching. Do let me know if you've read any of the books I've talked about today. Let me know if you're an abominable subscriber um, and if so, what you got as your mystery book in July. Um, it's always fun opening the box and particularly fun opening the mystery book. I really do enjoy that. Um, but yeah, as always, hope you're safe and well. Hope you're really good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.